This is Doug Brunk reporting from the annual meeting of the American Academy of Dermatology in San Diego. I'm speaking with Dr. Cheryl Gustafson, who presented results from a national analysis of the medications most likely to cause skin-related adverse events. When you look at the medical literature, there's a paucity of information. There's a lot out there overall on adverse drug events on their own, but what is actually seen in the outpatient setting in regards to cutaneous adverse drug events. So we went and sought to find that information out using the National Ambulatory Medical Care Survey. The interesting finding was that in addition to looking at the medication categories associated with cutaneous adverse drug events, we looked at the reason for the patient visit, such as the diagnosis. And out of all the patient visits to outpatient and emergency rooms for cutaneous manifestations of drug events, 11% were associated with a dermatologic condition. So as practicing dermatologists, you know, antibiotics are one of the most common medications we prescribe in addition to steroids, that it's important for us to be aware that the medication that we're maybe prescribing for a different skin condition could actually be a culprit and cause a cutaneous adverse drug event. So to always be on the watch out for that. There is approximately 635,000 annual visits specifically to outpatient clinics for cutaneous adverse drug events, as well as to emergency rooms. So when you do a national average on that, it came out to be about 2.26 visits per 1,000 visits were specifically for these cutaneous reactions to drugs. And then we specifically looked at to determine, well, what were the major medication categories that were associated with these cutaneous adverse drug events? Out of those, about a quarter of them were due to antibiotics. And amoxicillin was the most common antibiotic associated with about 23% of all antibiotic cutaneous adverse drug events being related to amoxicillin. The second leading cause were actually cardiovascular drugs, which accounted for about 7% of these reactions. And unfortunately, just by the way things are recorded, there are probably a good 25% where the drug was actually unidentified because maybe the number of medications a patient was on and you just couldn't eliminate and determine what it specifically was. Yeah.